Hello, this is Edward Hopkins. I'm the pastor at Wellspring United Methodist Church. I am a Christian pastor, not a rabbi. And it's so odd now that I would be inviting my congregation to participate in a traditionally Hebrew Seder meal come Thursday in Holy Week. The reason for that is this virus is not allowing people together and will not allow us to come together for Monday Thursday service for our traditional foot washing and, and service of the of Holy Eucharist. No will it allow us to come on Friday when we do stations of the cross or we do the tenebrae service with the lengthening of the shadows telling the story of Jesus and his passion up until his death. We can't come together on Saturday and do nothing and wait and have a prayer vigil here in the church because of this virus. And then on Sunday morning, when we usually gather outside by the cross and celebrate sunrise and the resurrection of Jesus, we're not allowed to do that. So as an alternative, what I would like to do is invite the congregation to participate in home where you are sheltering in place with parents and grandparents and kids and whoever comes around the table normally to come around the table on that evening and celebrate a traditional Seder meal. This is a service that has been celebrated by the Hebrew community for thousands of years. And there is a, a way that it's done. So I would like to invite you to participate in this meal on that night precisely because it was at that meal that Jesus gathered in the upper room with his family of disciples and they sheltered in place and celebrated Passover that evening and it was at that meal that Jesus took the wine took the bread and said things that had never been said before. It becomes that service that centers us as Christians. We know who we are because of that meal. It seemed appropriate to me that maybe we could explore this Seder meal to understand more about Jesus. But I'd like to ask if you would bow your heads, please. Blessed are you, Adonai. You are our God. You are the king of all the universe. You are the one who created the fruit of the vine, and you are the one who created the, the bread that we eat. You are the one who created us. You were the one who looked upon your people weeping in darkness, who longed for the light, and you sent us your son to be the fulfillment of what you always promised, Messiah. He came, and he lived, and he loved, and he taught, and he changed understandings about what Messiah was and is and always will be. But because of the name of Jesus, we have been forever changed. He is our Passover. He is our Pesach. He is our redemption. Lord, bless us as we uh, enter into this time of Seder remembrance. And I make my prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. The service begins with blessings, and uh, they're called the Kadush. Blessed are you, Adonai, our God, sovereign of the universe, who creates the fruit of the vine. Grukata Adonai Eloheinu Malek Ha'olem. You are the one who sanctified us with your commandments, and you, Adonai, Eloheinu, have lovingly bestowed upon us Sabbaths for rests and appointed times for happiness and holidays and seasons for joy. Well, this is our season of freedom, a holy convocation recalling the exodus when you set us free from captivity as slaves from Egypt. Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu Malek Ha'olam, you have distinguished between the sacred and the secular, you, between the light and the darkness, between the seventh day and the six working days. You are the one who have set aside and sanctified your people with your holiness. And by your holiness, 
you have made us holy. Blessed are you, Adonai, our God. You have called us holy. Burukata Adonai Elohenu Malek Haolam. You have gathered us into life. And you've given us the sustenance we need and permitted us to reach this season. Ah. In honor of that now, we all drink our first drink from the first cup of blessing, remembering all that for which we give thanks. comes the traditional washing of our hands and everyone at table washes hands hand washing is not something we do just because of the appearance of the coronavirus washing hands is what the Jews have always done it's not a symbol necessarily of good hygiene at table but it's a symbol of being pure made pure in the presence of a living God who is at table with us Following the washing of hands, each diner takes the carpus, the green vegetable, and dips it in the salt water. You can have one, con one container of salt water at table. The carpus is a green vegetable which speaks to us of life, new life, and its greenness. And it's good and it's healthy, but we dip it in salt water to remind us that even in the midst of good things, even in the midst of the springtime of our life, that there have been many who have dropped tears and the saltiness of their tears is combined with the possibilities of this new thing. Blessed are you, Adonai, our God, sovereign of the universe, who created the fruit of the earth. The vegetables remind us of the blessings of God's provision in the garden, but the salt water reminds us of the tears of our forefathers and the, our own tears because of our disobedience and our rejection. Then the host at table takes from the stack of matzah, the middle matzah. This is matzah unleavened bread. Unleavened because the Jews didn't have time to allow the yeast to work in the flour. And so they took it as it was. Matzah. And the host breaks the middle matzah like that. And wraps a portion of that, the larger portion, in a in a beach towel, evidently. <laughs> and then it can be taken off and hidden later. It's called the apakoman. Hidden, and then children have the, the joy of being able, towards the end of the meal, to go and to find the hidden apakoman and to bring it back. The promise that God made us when he delivered us from, from slavery, gave us the covenant, brought us through the wilderness and established us in the promised land, fed us with, with manna that fell from the trees. We haven't brought to completion yet. And the Jews waited because what would bring it to completion when God finished his promise by sending one to be Messiah, the promised one. He would be our redemption, and the Jews wait. And so we send off this piece of Afakoman to be found, lost. In my mind, however, being a Christian, when the children go to find what was lost and bring it back, it sounds to me as if God found the world by sending us the one who was Messiah, whose name was Jesus. And Christians, we live our lives seeking him, who came close to us and spend our lives seeking him, the one we call, the one who said, I am the way and the truth and the life. So we seek the truth, come what may cost what it will. The 
scripture tells us that that there would be manna that would fall from the tree. And by eating the manna and trusting God's provision when there was no other food, that human beings could come to know that they don't live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. The word of God is the true bread for which we hunger. And the Jews waited And they waited desperately for the promised one, the Messiah, who came to Israel to complete their redemption. In the meantime, part of the bread of heaven is missing. John 6 says this, Jesus tells everyone, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. We seek the truth. Following the celebration of the bread, we begin to recite the actual words of the Haggadah. The Haggadah is the ritual ceremony that accompanies the Seder meal. The host will raise the top matzah so everyone can see and then declares, this is the bread of affliction which our fathers ate in the land of Egypt. Let all who are hungry come and eat. Let all who are needy come and celebrate the Passover. At present, we are slaves, but next year, may we be free people. And then the host breaks the matzah and says, at present we are broken. Next year, may we be whole. And I hope you recognize that when the host takes the bread and breaks it, Jesus said something altogether different. I hope you remember that, that on Monday, Thursday, he took the bread, and instead of saying what the Haggama, the Haga, the Haggadah told him to say, he broke the bread and he said, this is my body, which is broken for you. Take and eat and do it in remembrance of me. Then everyone has uh, their cup replenished. Grape juice. At that point, the youngest one present asks questions. Whoever the youngest one is. And the questions are like this. On all other nights, we eat bread or matzah on, on this night. Why only matzah? on this night. And then the second question, on all other nights, we eat herbs and vegetables of any kind, but on this night, we only eat bitter herbs. The third question, on all other nights, we don't dip even once, but on this night, why do we dip twice? And the fourth question, on all other nights, we eat our meals in any manner we see fit. But on this night, why do we eat around the table together in a reclining position? And I don't recommend that maybe you put the table on the floor and everybody sits down. But for this meal, for this celebration feast meal for the Jews, Passover meal was, was eaten as people reclined, sitting on one side, leaning. And that's why when, when Jews sit at table, and neither do they recline necessarily, but they, they lean, and they lean on purpose, and they lean on their arm, on table, even though my mom said, get your elbows off the table, Mabel, or something. But for the Jews, it was, it was remembrance that on this night, we recline, and 
this night is different than all other nights. And the reasons for it are all summed up in what we'll all read together. It's taken from Deuteronomy and the 26th chapter. It says this, A wandering air man was my ancestor. And he went down to Egypt and he lived there as an alien, few in number. And there he became a great nation, mighty and populous. When the Egyptians treated us harshly and afflicted us, by imposing hard labor on us, we cried to the Lord, to the God of our ancestors. And the Lord heard our voice and saw our infliction and our toil and our oppression. And the Lord brought us out of Egypt with a mighty hand and an outstretched arm with a terrifying display of power, with signs and wonders. And he brought us to this place, and he gave us this land, a land which flows with milk and honey. After we had a chance, explain why it is that we are doing then there is a blessing blessed be God who has given us the Torah to his people Israel blessed be he and then a child asks well, why are we eating this meal this way an adult answers this is done on account of what Adonai did for me when I came out of Egypt. You don't miss that. It, it, it seems odd, but for the adult at the table to explain we're doing this because of what God, not because of what God did for my ancestors, but because of what God did for me when he set me free. And then another, another child will ask, well, what is this all about? And some adult will say, with the strong hand, Adonai brought us out of Egypt from the house of slavery. And there is a, a chance for somebody who was unable to ask anything for him or herself. And one not even to that place yet. And to the one asking questions that can't even be articulated, some adult will say, this is on account of what Adonai did for me when I came out of Egypt. And then everyone together will say, Blessed be he who keeps his promise to Israel. Blessed be he. Now, while the Jews endured harsh slavery in Egypt, God chose Moses to lead them out to freedom. And Moses encountered God at the burning bush and then returned to Egypt to lead the people out of Egypt. And he demanded that Pharaoh let the Jewish people go. There was a song that you can sing if you want to. It's a wonderful, especially the, the chorus part. It goes like this. When Israel was in Egypt's land, let my people go. Oppressed so hard they could not stand, let my people go. Go down, Moses. Way down in Egypt's land And tell old Pharaoh Let my people go So Moses went to Egypt's land Let my people go He made the Pharaoh understand Let my people go Go down, Moses, way down in Egypt's land, and tell old Pharaoh, let my people go. No more shall they in bondage toil, let my people go. Let them come out with Egypt's spoil, 
let my people go. Go down, Moses, way down in Egypt's land, and tell old Pharaoh, let my people go. At this point, the host raises the grape juice cup one more time, and he says, this promise has sustained our fathers and us. For not only one enemy has risen against us, oh no, to annihilate us, no, but in every generation nations rise up against us. But the Holy One, blessed be He, saves us from their hand. He always has, always will. Before we drink of this cup of blessing, however, the cup of wine is left undrunk for the moment. Now, Pharaoh hardened his heart against Moses and his request. He refused to let the Jewish people go, and that is why God sent the ten plagues. It is a tradition, however, in the Jewish community to remove ten drops of juice from the cups as we recite the ten plagues, and this as a remembrance that while the Jews were redeemed through these plagues, people suffered as a result. The plague of the blood in the Nile. The plague of the frog. The plague of the vermin. The plague of the beasts. The plague of the disease in the cattle. The plague of the boils, the plague of the hail, the plague of the coronavirus, the plague of the darkness, and then finally, the plague of the slaying of the firstborn. Pharaoh allowed the Jewish people to leave, and the Jews left Egypt in such haste that the dough they had wasn't allowed to rise, but was unleavened, matzah. When the Egyptians entered the sea, it returned to its natural state, and then the mighty Egyptian army was drowned. There is a song that has a wonderful chorus, wonderful verses, wonderful chorus, and a song that says, God acted on behalf, and if God had done anything, that would have been enough. But it wasn't God finished. Despite our suffering, God has bestowed many favors upon us. So I would suggest that maybe that the whole group read the verse and then everyone sing the Da Yen Yud. And it sounds like that had he brought us out of Egypt and not executed judgments against the Egyptians, it, it would have been enough. And, and in Hebrew, the word is Da Yen Yud, which means enough. And the song goes like this. And it, I just gotta pull it.
Yili hotsi hotsi anu, hotsi anu mi mitrayim, hotsi anu mi mitrayim da ye nu, da da ye nu, da da ye nu, da da ye nu, da ye nu, da ye nu. Had he brought us out of Egypt and not executed judgments against the Egyptians? Da da ye nu, da da ye nu, da da ye nu, da ye nu, da ye nu. Had he executed judgments against the Egyptians and not given us their riches? Da da ye nu, da da ye nu, da da ye nu, da ye nu, da ye nu. Had he given us their riches? And then not split the sea for us. Well, da da ye nu, da da ye nu, da da ye nu, da ye nu, da ye nu. And he split the sea for us and not let us through it on dry land. Well, da da ye nu, da da ye nu, da da ye nu, da ye nu, da ye nu. And it's, there's more verses in there. And taking the cup, there is a blessing. Brukata Adonai Eloheinu, Malek Ha'olam, who created the fruit of the vine. And then everyone drinks the second cup of wine. Or grape juice. Then we wash our hands again, just prying to prior to getting to the service the meal itself. And by the way, let me let me stop here and say I don't know what your time of meal is like. But this is not a service uh, in, in church where we all have to sit still and not wiggle or be sent out or be ushered out. It's a meal. And it's a meal and it's, and it's all of the aspects of a meal is operating here, a family gathered together with people who truly love each other and respect each other, and for parents who truly want children to learn these heritages that we have, this tradition that makes us who we are. And it's an opportunity to teach, and it's an opportunity to have great joy. If it's absent joy, there's no point of having a Seder meal. This has to be all of the joy that's around the table like I was when I was a kid at my grandma's house when we celebrated Thanksgiving. There is a blessing that goes with the washing over the hands. Blessed are you, Adonai, our God, the sovereign of the universe, who has sanctified us with your commandments and commanded us concerning the washing of our hands. Then the host will take the matzah and will offer a blessing. Brukata Adonai Eloheinu Malek Ha'olam, who brings forth the bread of the earth, who has sanctified us with your commandments and commanded us concerning the eating of matzah. And then the host breaks the bread and passes the bread to everyone at table so that everyone at table will have a chance to eat the bread. It's important, it's important in the tradition of the Jews that everyone eat this bread. Mm, that's some good matzah. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Not quite as old as Moses, <laughs> but, <laughs> but close. <laughs> Following that, there was a blessing which says, Blessed are you, Adonai, our God, sovereign of the universe 
who has sanctified us with your commandments and commanded us concerning the eating of the bitter herbs on your plate every plate there is a portion of bitter herbs this is this is horseradish and it's real horseradish because I just grated this at home and added some vinegar and I would recommend for fresh horseradish you should try that but whatever you do use your food processor outside in the garage <laughs> otherwise it will make everyone's eyes turn to water and so this is this is bitter herbs and remind us, reminds us of the bitterness of the suffering of those who came before us of those who came before us but who have brought to us God's word and God's Torah and have taught us even through the pain even through their tears even through their sorrow we don't eat the bitter herbs just as they are though we are blessed because we're able to place along with along with the bitter herbs haroset which is a reminder of the mortar that the, the Jews used to lay the bricks in Egypt it has a sweetness to it so some of the sweetness mitigates some of the bitterness but some of the bitterness takes away some of the sweetness because I think that's probably what life is Following that, Rabbi Hillel, he said, here's what we'll do. Because we're, we're commanded to eat, to eat the, the matzah with bitter herbs. He said, what we'll do is we'll take this bitter vegetable, this romaine lettuce, which if you know romaine lettuce, the first bite is sweet. But by the end of it, down to the stalk, it can get bitter. And we'll put that together. And we'll add some of the horseradish on there. That way we'll be able to eat both, both the matzah, which is a symbol of our freedom, a symbol that we had to leave so fast because of what God has done, taking us out of Egypt. And we'll mix that together with the pain of our suffering our time in Egypt and we'll be able to eat I don't think you're supposed to but I'm going to put some of this horrific on here don't tell anybody because that's, that's good stuff Did I mention I made it myself? Did I mention it? Oh, oh. You just talk amongst yourselves for a moment. <laughs> When we've done the portions, the only thing we don't do anything with is this roast. It just sits on a table to remind us of our escape from, from slavery, our escape from Egypt at the hand of God, mighty and outstretched. At this point in the service, you will have fixed a meal, and so now you can bring in the meal that you have and just have family time. And towards the end of the meal, we'll send off the children to look for the Alpha Coleman, which you'd hidden somewhere. And I remember it didn't take me as long to eat as my parents because they talked the whole time. So, so they'll, I would go off, we would go off and, and find the Alpha Coleman somewhere hidden and then bring it back in. And it's a celebration it, of, uh, of f finding what was lost. <laughs> finding what was lost, which was the bread 
bread of heaven, the word of God, and he comes in, and that is our, that will be our dessert. When, as you eat your meal, there's also the opportunity for the first course of the meal that you have to have your, have your egg. Sometimes families roast the egg, and I just boiled it. I don't suppose it matters. Well, anyway, hopefully when you do your egg, your, the eggs you, you bought won't be as quite <laughs> as new as the ones that I have because all of the shell has stuck. Anyway, so life shouldn't be like that. Sometimes it's, sometimes it's bitter herb and sometimes it's, it's sweet. Uh, there. And after you finish your meal, I recommend that you have, you have a grace after the meal. Let's bring everybody back together again as people are finishing up. Don't let people leave the table and go run the dishwasher. But rather have people stay for the blessing after the meal. And I want to end with this. This is from taken from Psalm 126. Psalm 126 is one of the Psalms of Ascent of the 15 Steps towards the, the gate to the place where the priests go where they have the, the incense and the cleansing into the holiest of holy places. But this is Psalm 126. Let's pray. When Adonai brought the exiles back to Zion, we were like those who dream. And then our mouth was filled with laughter and our tongue with glad song. And then it was said among the nations, Adonai has done great things for them. Adonai had done great things for us. And we rejoiced. Restore our captives, Adonai, like streams in the Negev. Those who sow in tears shall reap in joy. And though the farmer bears the measure of seed, to the field in sadness, he shall come home with joy, bearing the sheaves. God bless you. God bless you now, and God bless you through Holy Week as we approach the most sacred day of the year, our Easter Vigil. Thank you.